Bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. Welcome to a well overdue vlog update. Have a look at the scenery that I can inspire with you today. Uh, we are now well and truly in the Haute Pyrenees. Just magnificent countryside and fantastic roads to be training on. Normandy Cat 900 now, I think is 51 days away. Who's counting? 51 days. <laughs> Yeah, so there's been heaps happening in the last few weeks, including racking up quite a lot of kilometres in preparation to try and get these legs into good enough shape. Just the last few days, we've had a big blast of winter hit us and you can see those peaks are covered with a fresh blanket of snow. It's definitely been a coolness in the air as well. But look at this perfect blue sky day Huge mountain peaks for inspiration. This is definitely my happy place. And I couldn't ask for better roads to train on. Nice and quiet and up, down. You can't go too many places here that's flat. Last week for me was a real big confidence booster. I decided to put all my training to the test, strap the gear onto my bike like it will be for the event and see how I go doing some really big distances two days in a row. So two days back to back, I plotted a route from where we are in the Haute Pyrenees to Bordeaux. Didn't know how it would go, didn't know what to expect had to have lots of different elements involved in it as well, including night riding or in the dark. Woo! So I departed very early morning on Monday and uh, set off in the dark. My lights lighting my way on roads I'd never navigated before for a proper test. This was me on a route I didn't know at all, seeing how my bike would go, how my gear would go, how my fueling strategy would go, <laughs> how my legs would go. And really, really chuffed to say I did it. Bordeaux, baby, I made it. Two days, 472 kilometers and about 20 hours or so of riding time. It was nuts, incredible, and such a big confidence boost. So stoked. So I thought I would update you and give you also a look at what my setup for the Normandy Cat 900 is pretty well going to be. Let's do the bike reveal. Well, there we go. So as you can see, I'm using my trusty road bike. This is my Bianchi Infinito CV circa 2014. So it's had a fair few kilometers put into it and whatnot but I know this like the back of my hand I feel I don't want to sound too cliche in saying I feel at one with the bike but I certainly feel like I know how to handle this bike and I understand it and it feels like the perfect tool for this event and I've also got it set up as you can see pretty lightweight so I'm going to go for a ultra light bike packing setup so I have here my awesome Apertura seat bag I think it's a, I'm just trying to think, I think this might be a 14 litre or a 17 litre. I'll definitely put it in there. And as you can see, just tied onto the saddle rails, nice and cinched on tight. I've also got this handy bungee here, and that's been invaluable for if I want to strap on extra food or take off items of clothing and, you know, like a gilet or gloves or whatnot, I can stuff it, stuff it in the back there as well. I do need a rear light set up, and thankfully I've got the Bont Rager Flare rear light there it's a perfect setup for it there which is really really good and then as you can see coming towards the cockpit and this is definitely a new addition for me and something that I've really started getting a handle on in terms of learning to use them and whatnot these are my tri bars so these are profile uh, profile design sonic 35 Five, I think is the actual model but I'll definitely put the exact details up here for you to see and as you can see 
I have them set up here with what is called a, I guess a block or a riser. So I have a 50 mil riser. Now, when I first got these, I actually just had them attached without the risers. So effectively, they were on my bike here without these blocks. And so the actual bars or the skis as the bars are called were actually a lot lower. I'll see if I can find a picture to add so that you can see what I mean. And what that meant was that when I was in the actual skis or the, or, the, or the bars themselves, I was actually in a much lower position. Now, if you're doing time trials, that's fantastic because you wanna be as low as you can to be really, really nice and aerodynamic and cut through the wind and go for speed. That is not the reason why I've got these lovely bars on my bike though. It's not for speed. It is for comfort and just providing me with a different position on the bike, providing my hands with some different options as well, taking some of the load off my lower back. So I ended up reaching out to a few people in the ultra community about their setup and they pretty much all came back with the exact same feedback. Get those bars up higher on your handlebars, get some blocks or risers and I went with the 50 mil option. And the great thing is, is it's pretty much, it almost puts me in a level position with my bike saddle there as well. So I'm not sure if you can see what I'm getting at. If I get to a lower position, you might be able to understand it a bit more. And that means that when I'm actually in the bars, I'm in a much more upright, neutral sort of endurance position. And that is really, really nice and comfortable. I have also got some bar tape here on the ends of the tri skis or the tri bar skis or bars i'm not sure what the exact terminology is and that has been really good for comfort and i find that just the position that my elbows rest in there is really nice and natural for my navigation i will be using the garmin 830 trip computer that i have here obviously with the bars on i needed to look for a different sort of mounting position and i've actually I normally, as you can see here, I normally have a Garmin or a K-Edge out front mount for my Garmin, for my handlebars, but that doesn't work really. I can have it in that position, but I find that the bars sort of skew it a bit. So all I've done is I've got the real simple attachment that my Garmin came with there, really old school, uh, and a little rubber band, and I've just got it attached here on the bars. I was initially worried that when I would be in the bar riding position that I would touch the touch screen and it would flicker at me, but I've given this a really good test. I don't touch it at all. From a visibility point of view, it's really visible and that's really important for me as well. Now, one of the things that I've really had to consider for this event is what am I going to go for my lighting solution for front lights? Now, I had wondered whether or not I need to change the front wheel setup that I have here uh, to a dynamo hub. So effectively meaning that as I pedal, my power gets transferred into, I guess, watts or electricity power, uh, and it charges batteries, which can then just charge lights. Now, I feel that the rim brake technology is on the out, and I'm not sure I really wanted to spend hundreds of dollars on a new front dynamo wheel, potentially just for one event. So, what have I done? Uh, as you can see, I do have a light attached here, and this light is attached to an external battery pack here. So, the light details for those who want to know those sort of facts is, these are night lights. Now, night lights are a local Australian brand from when I used to live in Canberra in Australia, and there was a local distributor there. So, back in the day, I used to do quite a lot of riding early in the morning Australia, mainly to avoid motor or vehicle traffic. And so in winter that meant I needed really good lights and night lights were a fantastic solution for that. The lumens set up on this is bright white brilliant. Like I think it's something crazy like 1100 lumens. I think on the 1100 lumen setting I have, if I was to use that light on full, I have I think about three hours of light illumination there. And there's two other settings which obviously extend the battery life more. But as the, those keen eye of you can see, I don't just have one battery, I have two. And that they've attached really, really well here on my tri bars. Excuse the uh, lovely vibrant green electrical tape, but I've just got that there with a little bit of bar tape just to make sure that 
the way that these batteries are cinched on, it, it won't actually fall backwards. And to be honest with you, I could probably get rid of that. These haven't moved an iota. Now, in my recent two day training ride where I rode to Bordeaux, I used the night lights. I did three hours in the darkness on day one and a couple of hours on day two. I only used the one um, battery pack. I didn't need to use my second at all. And pretty much, unless I was descending downhill in the pitch black, I didn't even have it on the full vibrance or brightness. I pretty much had on, on illumination level one or two, which is just illuminated or you know mid-level. There was certainly no need for 1100 lumens. The other thing that I will have is my Petzl head torch. And that is because as brilliant as these are in terms of casting fantastic illumination all around me, when you're descending and you physically need to see around corners, your handlebars don't turn as your head does. But if I have a head torch on, my head turns and I can see through the corners and it just makes it a lot more safer. Now, of course, unlike a dynamo, which charges the lights as you pedal and go, the night lights charge with a, the batteries charge here with a DC charger so I do have to bring a small electronic charger in with me. My plan for the Normandy Cat is that I'm not going to be staying or bivvying or by the roadside so I will be checking into hotels who knows what time at night but that does mean that I will have access to chargers and I can recharge my batteries so I'm fairly happy with my decision to not go with the dynamo setup I'm really happy with how they mount there on the bars and I feel really confident when I was traveling and descending with it last week on that two-day ride I didn't notice the extra weight there at all and if anything it probably actually gives some extra balance to the way that the bike is set up anyway so I'm really happy with that. In terms of water storage I've only got one bottle in there at the moment but I will obviously be carrying two water bottles and if anything that that two day ride to Bordeaux taught me was that when you see areas to fill up with water in France you fill up uh, so I've been given the great tip of cemeteries often have a tap and I have used a cemetery to refill I found toilets as well with a hand basin where I can refill and some villages also have like fountains where they have signs saying eau potable which in French means you know drinking water so I've been able to refill there so I'm pretty happy with two water bottles set up in terms of the rest of the front cop kit, so this will probably change. This is just my Apertura top tube bag and it's a half bag. I've got lots of room here for different things to go in there that are very accessible when I'm there on the bike. But what I think I will change to is Apertura now do what they call a racing top tube bag, I think it is. And it's similar to that, but it actually goes the whole length of the top tube. When I did my two day ride to Bordeaux, what I found was the more storage I had for little bits and pieces like food and whatnot, the easier it is to actually get to, the more likely I am to eat it. Had a point where it was really cold and having my big gloves on, reaching into my back jersey pockets for food, just became a bit problematic and I was aware that I probably wasn't fueling as much as I'd like. So I'm figuring that if I change this small feed bag set up, to the full long feed bag that they have that will allow for two things one i can have lots more food at my disposal and i can also just have you know things like the charging cables and whatnot for you know charging my head unit um, for navigation and stuff easily accessible as well so i'm really really happy with that decision and that's definitely something that i will change about this setup and then lastly for the front cop kit to finish it off i have not one but two feed bags these are revelate but you can get them from all sorts of really good reputable bikepacking manufacturer of bags like apadura have some as well as do a whole heap of other brands so what i like about these is storage 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 and easy to get into you you pull on this cord here to open or to open it up and you tug on this strap to cinch it closed so it's really easy one hand use when you're riding at the moment because i don't have any food in there i'm not going on a long ride i've just got things like tire levers and spare tube and i've also got like a multi-tool in this pocket at the front and this is what i really like or on the side i've got these sort of nice bungee sort of mesh area so i've got my long fingered gloves in there at the moment some other little bits of food <laughs> hand sanitizer sign of the times on the other side i've got and this will definitely go in my saddlebag this here is a must 
because I have tubeless tyres set up and the bead on the tube, well I'm hoping, I'm certainly hoping not to have any puncture issues or anything like that but if I do obviously I have to carry spare tubes with me and I've just found that the tolerances have to be that little bit tire for tyres and rims oh, to get onto the rim and as much as I like to think I'm strong these cyclist arms aren't too strong and I really, really struggle sometimes to get the tire either off or beaded back onto the rim. This little tool that I've got, it's just called X-Tools. I'm sure it's a generic tool, but pretty much what this allows me to do is actually with my little weighty arms, I can actually get a tire back onto the rim and that is invaluable. It'll definitely be tucked away in this bag here. And then the other thing that I have in here is, this is really good, so this is my homemade trail mix uh, with, <laughs> I may as well call it, these are like my little nuggets of gold, they're peanut M&Ms. The inner child in me needs a little mental boost or lift every now and then when you're doing the long kilometres and that's just a trail mix that I've made up with, with little bits of chocolate to keep the spirits high. For when I'm doing really long rides I find sometimes it's hard to actually get the amount of nutrition I need in in bulk but I find with a trail mix it's nice and calorie dense and just a small handful here or there has been really really effective but other than that I think that is that is the gear on the bike the one thing that I will also be changing though is and this is as a result of testing out my setup Whilst it's a lightweight setup, doing lots of kilometres, anything that I can do to make travelling on this bike feel that little bit easier is really, really appreciated. And to that end, what I will be doing is changing out that rear derailleur. I run a Campagnolo Chorus mechanical group set here, which I have a compact crank set, which is a 50-34 chainring. And on the rear there, I have a, currently I've got a cassette of 11 to 29. Well, I will stick with the 50, 34 chain rings on the front. I will be looking to swap out the rear cassette and give myself a, a couple of extra gears. So to do that, I need a long, what's called a long derailleur cage. What I have here at the moment is a short derailleur cage and so it's at the limit on the 1129 is the max that I've been told it can go to. So if I swap that out for a longer derailleur, I can give myself a bigger rear cluster on the back. If I change the free hub, I have a Shimano free hub which I can put onto that rear wheel. That means with a long derailleur cage, I can even give myself up to 34, maybe even 36. So it sounds like a real extravagance, but what I found was with this bike set up this way and with you know my clothes and everything in the back of that bike as soon as I hit a gradient of around six or seven percent I was in that lowest gear of 29 and really praying that the hill wasn't going to go on for stupidly long amounts I'm a really good climber and I normally love climbing in these beautiful mountains and 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 feel at home in them but this is a race of endurance and if I can spin to win and give myself some extra gears that is definitely what I'm going to be doing and I'm going to be looking at making that change soon. So as you can see that's the bike, that's the setup. Let me know your thoughts for those of you who've done this style of event before. Am I overthinking things? Do you think I've missed anything crucial out that I need to be thinking about taking with me? Do you think the bike setup that I've got is a good one. What do you think of my light setup? Uh, do you think that the going with the night lights and the two battery packs should be a good solid idea or should I be considering a dynamo? I don't know, <laughs> but maybe you do. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. I'm thrilled that so many of you have taken an interest in what I'm actually doing here. I am 52 days away, 51. 51 or 52 days away from event takeoff. I have a lot of training still left ahead of me, but once again, I really feel with that, you know, two day ride to Bordeaux that I can do this. And mentally that's been a big, the biggest hurdle for me to overcome. So a bit more training to do, a bit more pedaling, many, many hours left in this saddle, but wow, getting closer. Let's see what we can do. If you like what you've seen so far, please give me a thumbs up. 
put any of the questions down there below. I do respond to all of them and yeah, uh, subscribe if you don't want to miss out on anything. Thanks again for watching and until next time, aviento, happy pedaling.